Welcome back. Today we are kicking tires, but a little bit different than usual. My buddy called me the other day and said, hey, come out and look at my new truck. And this is what he showed up in. A 2021 Ram 5500. This is a big boy truck. It is awesome. Love the white color, which with a work truck, that's what you should get, in my opinion. But just a monster of a truck. I was a little bit surprised that he went with the Ram because he is a Chevy guy. You may remember our 2006 versus 2021 Chevy comparison, that's his truck. Just always been a Chevy guy, but when it came right down to it, the Ram had more usable numbers for him. The Chevys, for some reason, just don't tow a whole bunch when you get up into this commercial grade. As we come around on the bed, this is a Bradford built bed. And something I haven't seen on a lot of these is this little flip out. So now you can drop the side down. Kind of nice to be able to just flip it around, flip it back up, kind of slick. Now he hasn't got all of his boxes put on yet, all the toolboxes, all that sort of stuff. Comment down below where you would put the boxes. He's been wondering about maybe just up in here or do you get the boxes that sit off the side? Yeah, suggestions taken down below on where to put the boxes to best utilize this bed. Got the gooseneck hitch already put in with this nice little cover. Go right over the top of it. Pretty, pretty dang slick. And the headache rack turned out really nice as well. Now for the boring part, as Kara would say, the payload and towing numbers. This thing can tow a lot of weight. 35,000 pounds towing and a payload before the bed of 12,500. And the bed's probably 1,500, 2,000 pounds, somewhere in there. So a 10,000 pound payload. Just to give you a little perspective, we could basically set our fifth wheel on the bed of this truck. I mean, the numbers say. that That's crazy to think when our one ton single rear wheel is like 3,500, 3,700, something like that to max it out. So it's crazy to think of the payload numbers that these 5,500 level trucks can actually handle and what they can tow. One thing about this truck, is it is not a rocket ship by any means. It has the 48, 488 gearing, and when you get going down the road, it starts revving up kind of high at freeway speeds. But when you've got a work truck and you're looking to pull heavy weights, it's nice to have those 488 gears. The interior is a no bells and whistles. This is a work truck. Vinyl seats, but they actually are pretty dang soft and comfortable. I, I've ridden in it twice now and really, they, they feel just fine. When it comes to the instrument cluster, pretty plain, um, little media screen. When you're getting into a work truck, it's kind of what you need and you don't need those other things. Coming in the back seat, lots of leg room. Great for hauling employees. That was a few cup holders. But like I said, no bells or whistles, just work. Walking around's all good, but it's now time to drive it. First thing I noticed though, um, I need to adjust the seat and I was over here looking for buttons. There, there's no buttons. You have to reach down and give it a slide. Been a long time since I had a slider seat. Also, some of the things that stand out to me right off the start, I love how Ram does their instrument instrument clusters and has the def gauge right there. Our Ford and our Chevy, no def gauge, and I hate it when you're in the middle of your trip or vacation and all of a sudden it comes on and says 1,000 miles left or 500 miles left or whatever. With the, our old Ram and with this, you can always just keep an eye on it and you can plan ahead a little bit. But that's enough talking. Let's go see how this thing rides. I'm pretty sure it's going to ride like a Cadillac. 
when we went for a ride the other day, Nathaniel's wife, all of a sudden her watch went off and she's like, oh, I just got my 10,000 steps. It bounced around enough that she was getting her steps as they drove. So hopefully the bed being put on is gonna make it a little bit smoother. You do notice how long this is. What size bed is it? 11 foot four. 11 foot four. 84 inch cab to axle. Yeah, we might have to see if the can ammo fit. It's been a long time since I drove a 5500 level truck. Used to drive my father-in-law's F550s around, helping him out in the oil fields, but it's been a long time in, since I've been in this big of a truck. What was that, Kara? I feel it's no different. No, Kara, you feel like it's no different than what? Ours. You feel like it's the, just like riding in our new one? No, I mean like size-wise. Oh, I don't know. I, I think it feels a little bit bigger. I mean, maybe, maybe as you drive. Maybe if I'm driving, I would know different. It'll be interesting to see how it does on the freeway, how smooth it is. Another thing I noticed right off is the sound of the Cummins. I don't know if there's a better sounding diesel engine. I like how our Duramax sounds, but the Cummins just, there's something about it. With the 11 foot four uh, bed, this is a long truck. And he doesn't have a backup camera on it yet. And he's been looking into which ones to get, all that sort of stuff. If you have any insight on which backup camera to get, please comment down below. It'd be awesome to get some insight on, or recommendations on which backup camera is kind of best for these. This truck only has 630 miles on it and it seems to be getting about 13 miles per gallon, so not too bad. It'll be interesting as it pulls and stuff to see what the gas mileage goes to. Our Ram always did better than our Ford and our Chevy have. And I wonder if it'll hold the same for this, even with the 488 rear end in it. Horsepower and torque numbers for this truck. The internet says 360 horsepower and 800 foot pounds, which with the 488 rear end will be way more than um, you'd ever need. It's crazy because a lot of times we get fixated like my our new truck has 400 plus horsepower and 900 plus foot pounds of torque and this work truck doesn't but with the gearing and all those sort of things it just changes it so it's not really comparing apples to apples one thing you'll find commercial trucks are always derated it's to preserve longevity and all those sort of things and with the high, with the lower rear ends and all that sort of stuff it just it works out better for them. As we're driving, Nate's pointing out that it's a, it kind of shifts a little bit different than our truck. That first gear really takes off kind of slow and waits a little bit to shift. And then once it gets in second gear and moving on, it, it just starts shifting pretty quick, but it revs pretty good on that first shift. Um, and I think it's just to get that a bigger trailer moving when you're really working it. You probably wouldn't notice it as much with a big trailer hooked on, but when you're just empty driving down the road, it's just kind of a little bit different. Now we're gonna jump on the freeway here, see how it does. Yeah, those second, third, fourth shifts are fairly quick. Yeah. But that first gear shift, it just... But I remember you saying back when we had our 06 that its first gear was different than your Duramax's 06's first gear with the Ram. So we're at 70 going down the freeway here, and we're at 2200 RPM. So it runs fine down the freeway, but you are pulling a little bit higher RPM. It's not that you can really hear it that much more though in the truck. Just give a little bit of a comparison. Our truck runs at about this speed at 1500 to 1800 RPM, while this is running at 2200, just showing that lower gearing, which is what you want with a work truck. It's not meant to do 80 or 90 down the freeway. But as we cruise down the freeway, really smooth, all right? What do you think, Kara? Do you notice anything different back there? Not necessarily. We just got a little bit of bounce to it, but... Yeah, I don't know if you're hearing that. Kara says there's a little bit of a bounce to it, but 
pretty smooth. I mean, yeah. Yeah, this freeway is not the best right here. The mirrors are pretty good. The guy behind us is picking his nose. <laughs> Tailgating close enough, I'm picking his nose. Gotta love it. Well, you can go ahead and hit that bed. I think all he'll do is scuff the paint. <laughs> it's kind of crazy how fast you get used to the size of the truck. It doesn't feel that big now after just driving it down the road for a little bit it just kind of feels regular size I'm sure I wouldn't want to go through a drive-through or you know a tight parking lot but not too bad on the size I was wondering what the break-in period before you could start towing with this was and in the manual basically it says load it up and send it which all the trucks I've had are thousand miles, you know, before you tow anything and all that. And it just seems typical for a workhorse like Cummins to be like, yeah, it, it's good to go. Just hook it up and go. Overall, I'd say this is a pretty cool truck. Not something that we need, but if you're looking for an actual work truck, it might be a way to go. With the payload numbers and the towing capacities and all those sort of things, seems pretty nice and i mean this just being the the work truck version still super nice inside comment down below what you think and which what you'd go with and as always thanks for watching like subscribe all that sort of stuff and enjoy your weekend